You are watching Statistics Made Simple and I am Savita Balsan. In this video, I will explain the test procedure for equality of means for small samples where the sample sizes N1 and N2 are less than 30. I will now explain the procedure for t-test for equality of means. Let us consider two normal populations. Let mu1 and sigma1 square denote the mean and variance of the first population respectively and let mu2 and sigma2 square denote the mean and variance of the second population respectively. Now note that the population variances are equal that is sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square is equal to sigma square and this value is unknown even under the t test for single mean remember that sigma square or sigma is unknown now suppose a random sample x1 x2 so on xn1 of size n1 is drawn from the first population then its sample mean is denoted by x bar and the sample variance is s1 square and these values are given by x bar is equal to summation x by n1 and s1 square is equal to summation x minus x bar whole square divided by n1 and if we cross multiply we get n1 s1 square equal to summation x minus x bar the whole square which I will denote it as equation 1. Note that x bar and s1 square are lowercase alphabets. Now let us consider a random sample y1, y2, so on yn2 of size n2 drawn from the second population. Then its sample mean is y bar and sample variance is s2 square which are given by y bar has the formula summation y by n2 and s2 square is equal to summation y minus y bar the whole square divided by n2 cross multiplying we get n2 s2 square is equal to summation y minus y bar the whole square which is denoted by equation 2 note that y bar and s2 square are in lower case alphabets. Here the null hypothesis is of the form H0. The two population means are equal that is mu1 is equal to mu2 versus any one of the following alternatives. The first one is H1 mu1 is not equal to mu2 which is a two tailed alternative. Then the second one is H1 mu1 is greater than mu2 which is a right tailed alternative and third is H1 mu1 is less than mu2 which is a left tailed alternative. Now the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis are exactly the same as what we had learned under large sample test for equality of means. Let us now learn the test statistic formula for the t-test for equality of means. Under H0, the test statistic is t equal to x bar minus y bar divided by capital S into root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 which follows t distribution with n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. Remember that sigma square is unknown. And so S square that is capital S square is used as its estimate and is given by the formula S square is equal to summation X minus X bar the whole square plus summation Y minus Y bar the whole square divided by N1 plus N2 minus 2. Then from equations 1 and 2 we can replace the numerator values and hence we get S square is equal to n1 s1 square 
plus n2 s2 square divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2. Depending on the information which is given in the problem, we use the appropriate formula for s square. Conclusion If mod t is greater than t alpha by 2, at alpha level of significance for n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom, we reject H0, otherwise we accept H0. This is for a two-tailed test. Similarly, for a right-tailed test, you have to check if T is greater than T alpha at alpha level of significance for N1 plus N2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. Then we reject H0, otherwise we accept H0. And for a left-tailed test, if T is less than minus T alpha at alpha level of significance, for n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom, we reject H0, otherwise we accept H0. How to identify that the given problem is based on tests for equality of means for small samples? First, the given problem will be based on only two samples of sizes n1 and n2, which are less than 30, and are drawn from two populations. Also, the population variances sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square or the population standard deviations sigma 1 and sigma 2 will never be given as they are unknown. Then words like mean, average, variance, standard deviation will be used. Both, we should be able to obtain six values from the problem that is n1, n2, x bar, y bar, s1 square, s2 square or s1, s2. Two sets of data will be given to us and along with it we will know n1 and n2 and we have to calculate x bar, y bar, s1 square, s2 square from the given data. There are several formulae in the t-test for equality of means. So do practice all the formulae thoroughly. Thank you all for watching and look out for my next video where I'll find solutions to problems based on the t-test for equality of means.